Welcome to Night Ducks. The internet is a place full of really creative people with a talent for creating unsettling fictional stories. Today, I'll be reading a story written by Reddit user Homicidal Hominid in 2015. I've read a few creepy stories, but this is by far the scariest one I think I've ever read. Without further ado, let's jump right in. I love camping. I always have. Back where I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, you'd have to make a decent drive to find a good secluded place to camp. That's the key to a successful trip, you know? You have to find a spot that's off on its own, away from the visitor center and all the first time campers that tend to litter the site with cans and wrappers. I'm also an avid horror buff, and as such, I'm aware that secluded camping usually leads to slasher massacres or witch hauntings or goat men attacks, at least the ones in the movies. Of course, they're just that, right? Stories and movies? But then, every one of those tales also stars a skeptic. I left Kentucky at the end of high school to attend college in Arkansas. You see, my mother had gone to school there and they provide a generous scholarship of in-state tuition to children of graduates, even though they come from a couple of states away. Going to the school in the Ozarks as a camping addict is fantastic. You wouldn't believe all the amazing spots there are to pitch a tent and enjoy nature at its purest. The Ozark National Forest, Devil's Den, Ouachita Park, it's just dozens more. America's most obese state is an ironic haven for hikers and campers alike. Jared was kind of like our leader. He was the guy that always knew a spot, no matter where we were camping. And he had this map, completely tattooed in markings and directions to all the most breathtaking areas. When we went to a new spot, or at least a spot that was new to him, he'd mark it on the map in either green, if the spot was good, or red, if the spot was kind of shitty. There were marks in other colors as well, but different ones. They were few and far between. They, They also led to marks with directions to each spot in highlighter. Jared looked the part, too long-haired granola-style hippie with a sleeve of tats and a couple of earrings in each ear, but our walking stereotype was the best of the best when it came to camping, and his information was rarely second-handed. So when he burnt up the group message running his mouth about this new spot his cousin had found a couple hours south, we all cleared our schedules. I mean, how often were we all going to go to a new location? We all met up with our buddy, Kyle, at his house to pack the truck with supplies. Kyle's dad was pretty wealthy, and as a gift for raising his GPA to 3.0, his father bought him a brand new F-150 to hopefully keep the academic train rolling. My roommate and I showed up first, along with a cooler full of beer and as a peace offering to Kyle for driving. We weren't technically legal, but Allie was only a month or two away, and she had a pretty killer fake, so we rationalized it morally, just as we had been doing for years. And Austin was next, with his five, six person tent, and Sam's Club bulk worth of jerky, and Jared arrived last. Just so you know, we abide by general road trip rules in this truck. Kyle barked, sliding into the front seat and bringing the engine to life. So I don't want to hear a single complaint about my music choice. I snorted. New truck, new rules. I vote we make some amendments. Seriously, I'm not listening to fucking trap the whole time. Austin snorted. You morons have no appreciation for my taste. Eventually, we decided on a rotation, and we quickly pulled out of the driveway to head to Jared's cousin's spot, a place called Creek Bend. Apparently it wasn't well known enough to be on the entire damn internet, so we navigated there pre-2003 style, the old fashioned way. The trip went pretty quick, and after three hours of listening to Kyle's trap and an assorted mix of alternative, we pulled off the main road onto a dirt trail somewhere in southern Arkansas. We drove for another half hour or so before the trail abruptly ended. Oh, this is alright. Jared chuckled with a smile. Let's grab the shit and get set up. I don't want to be fumbling with the tent in the dark. We followed Jared through the brush for a bit until we reached a gorgeous clearing. The mountains rose up all around us and the mid-autumn trees set the world ablaze. The setup didn't take long and soon we had the tent in perfect shape and we had a roaring fire. We'd been shooting the shit for a couple hours or so, enjoying the sunset and roasting hot dogs when Allie asked the question we'd all been wondering. How'd your cousin even find this place? Jared shrugged. He didn't really. Max frequents this outdoorsy form, and he said this guy PM'd him with the site and pictures. 
Said he wanted to check it out first, but he was all busy all weekend and knew we'd be all for breaking it in. He took a drink of his own beer. So, here we are. I think it's a pretty good spot. Sounds like the plot to a horror flick. Random stranger gives coordinates to mystery camping location. Austin grinned. Oh, I dare some psychopath to come take us on. I'd love to see one try with six holes in his skull. Jared just rolled his eyes. This guy was pretty well known on the side. I think we're good. But, hey, nice to know you brought your gun. Austin laughed and reclined, flopping back to gaze at the stars. We decided to turn in a bit later, and while we got ready for bed in the tent, Austin went to take a leak. When he came back, Allie held the zipper shut. Password! Oh my god, are you 12? Just let me in, come on. Sorry, but rules are rules. Okay, is the password you're all fucking idiots let me in, I'm freezing to death? Nope, that's not it. Try again. Allie giggled and I threw a look at Jared and Kyle. We all thought they had a thing. This is so stupid. We heard Austin shuffle his feet. Please? Come on in. Allie said with a sixth grade smirk. We all slept together when we camped in the fall or winter since it's usually pretty cold. Plus it was easier to bring one tent rather than five. It wasn't ever weird or uncomfortable and Kyle usually generated so much heat it would be worth it even if it were. You know the feeling when you wake up and you're really not sure why? Like, you can't really place why you woke up. It's as if you were asleep and then suddenly you just weren't. That's how it was for me, only accompanied with a sense of anxiety. I tossed my sleeping bag for a moment before I noticed Austin crouched by the exit of the tent holding the zipper shut. I rubbed my eyes and screwed my vision against the darkness. Austin... Austin, what's going on? Shh. I crawled over by him, and he looked at me, eyebrows raised. I think something's outside the tent. Maybe like a bear or something that woke me up. Should we tell the others? I asked. Nah, I'm... He hesitated. I, I, I'm not worried. Did the sound wake you up too? I shook my head. Oh, well, it brushed up against the tent by my face, and that's what woke me. Thought maybe it had jarred you awake too. It sounded pretty big like... He was interrupted by shuffling outside the tent. It did sound big. We looked at each other and I kicked the others awake. Oh, what the fuck, guys? Jared shushed them and we all listened again. More shuffling. Closer to the tent this time. Austin had his hand on his bag, ready to grab the gun if it was a bear. Which seemed pretty unlikely for Arkansas. We'd been camping for years and we'd never seen a bear. Austin squinted through the mesh. Guys, I don't think that's a bear. As if in response, whatever was outside moved directly in front of the zipper. Its voice was choppy, garbled, and sounded just like Austin. Please. Please. Please, 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 please. please. Please, let me in. Holy shit! Jared whimpered. Austin, even in the dark, paled. More shuffling. I'm freezing. Please, please let me in. Please, let let me in. Let, let me in. Who's out there? Austin barked, his own voice carrying all the fear he tried to hide. Who's out there? The thing rasped trying to sound human. Who's in there? It tried mimicking Austin, each word, each tone, and none of it matched up and made all the sentences improperly meshed together. I said, uh, I said, who's out there? I have a gun! Austin's voice betrayed his terror even more this time. Kyle and I looked at each other and Allie started to shake. We knew this, this wasn't a person. I had read all the stories, watched the movies, whatever this was, this was not human. Gun. 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 It was like it was trying to word it out, like a fucked up learning by phonics lesson. Let me in. I'm I'm freezing to death. Please. 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 It moaned. The voice sounded more together this time, as if it was starting to get the hang of Austin's voice. 
Kyle crawled forward and slammed both of his hands right on the mesh. No, go away! He shouted. Rapid shuffling in place. No, 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 no! It screamed in a butchered version of Kyle. No, please listen! Please let me in! I'm freezing! Then, in a combined voice of dozens of people, I'M STARVING! Austin choked back a sob and ripped the gun from his pack. No! Jared hissed. Austin, you don't know what you- He fired it through the mesh, emptying the chamber. An otherworldly shriek pierced the stagnant air as the shuffling retreated. <sighs> to the car. Now! Jared hissed. You shouldn't have done that, Austin. You, you shouldn't have done that. He added, unzipping and ducking out of the flap. We all followed, blindly stumbling after Jared, leaving all of our stuff behind with whatever the hell was back there. I could hear it giving chase. It broke through the trail somewhere far behind this awkward gate, crashing through the trees and bush. We reached the car, clamoring in, most of us crying. I turned to my seat and Kyle revved the engine to life, searching the tree line. Its body was illuminated by the moon as it emerged from the brush. It must have been nine feet tall, skin white as the light that revealed it. Its form was like a distorted human. It was an unsettlingly long, thick torso with bony, unnaturally thin limbs protruding. Legs were short, and I, I wondered just how it managed to stay standing on such weak-looking extremities. Its arms were equally thin, but long enough to drag along the ground as it walked. It had human-like hands, four elongated fingers, and a claw-like thumbnail in place of the digit. Its head was a darkness all its own. It was disproportionate for one. Its mouth took up almost the entire face, and was filled with teeth of various sizes and shapes. It had no nose, but its eyes glinted all pupil in the bright light of the moon. Just under the chin was a large sack like a tumor or a blister. It hung nearly to its shoulders and pulsed with every shriek and every moan that it gave. Kyle floored the pedal and we peeled down the trail. It watched as we flew down the road completely still and gave one final scream as we disappeared from sight silent the entire ride home. The only sound was Jared's shaking hands as he pulled out the map and drew a purple X through Creek Bend. I still camp sometimes, but only at the visitor areas. The five of us haven't been out together much since. I wonder about Jared's map sometimes. There were other markings on it, more than just red, green, and Creek Bend's purple. Sometimes, I wonder what else he's seen. I want to take a moment and give proper credit here. This story was written by Reddit user Homicidal Hominid in 2015. The painting of the monster in this story is a work that I commissioned by Reddit user Demon Payman to create for this video. He was extremely professional and he's very talented, and I look forward to hiring him again. I'll leave links to the original story and to Demon Payman below in the description. This channel is in its infancy, and I really hope I've earned a subscription from you. If you'd like more content like this in the future, please let me know. Whether or not you choose to return to my channel, I'd like to thank you for watching. This video was quite a bit of work to, to uh, put together, so I really hope you enjoyed it. For now, this is Night Ducks, signing off.